I'm Janine, and this is Outside the Box. Today's special guest is Dean Carroll. Welcome, Dean. Janine, thank you so much for inviting me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Congratulations on your book. I actually have a copy right here, Mastering the Basics. Tell me how this came about. Well, I have worked in the uh, publishing business as a sales director for many years. And um, in a lot of the training that I do with the salespeople I work with, we also we get involved with you know advanced methodologies or advanced training techniques. And I've always come back to the basic theory of that we have to learn you know social skills, people skills. I'm a big believer in emotional intelligence and the importance of that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these are skills that aren't taught in in universities or trade schools or whatever. And I spend a lot of time uh, focusing on basic you know, skills, no matter what it might be, whatever we might be doing in our work. And I think it's a very important thing. So I set up the book with 200 different topics that are involved with basic, uh, basic training. You know, when I was looking at the book and I was thinking about what's going on right now with COVID, it's got to be so hard to be in sales. And one of the things which you just quickly mentioned is you have to be really in tune to people. So if you're off and giving your sales pitch and it's a hard sell, but somebody's going through a really tough time because they have a lost a loved one, B they have somebody who's very sick or they have young kids, et cetera, et cetera. You can paint all kinds of different scenarios. Right. You can't be so salesy. You have to dial into the humanity right now. And that'll, that'll be something that people will remember about you. I think the best salespeople, whether it's good times or the difficult times we're in right now are the ones who listen, who ask questions, they aren't salesy, like you say, and they, yeah. they show compassion, care, um, the true belief of emotional intelligence. And these are the best sales professionals. They're curious. <laughs> they ask probing questions. Um, they don't talk a lot. And then they let the people respond. And, 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 uh, and again, especially right now, the best sales professionals are the ones who are able to do that. Right. Because imagine somebody has this goal in mind in meeting with somebody through Zoom. And then they right. tap into the fact the person's having a really bad day and they just say, you know what, why don't we just talk next week? That you sounds know? so easy, doesn't it? And it's it interesting does. how many people forget that. And it's, I know I cringe, you know, we're all on LinkedIn now and you know me, you know, you accept an invitation from somebody to connect. And then two minutes later, you get a, a oh. sales pitch and I'm thinking, now, who trained this person? I feel so bad for these people who are who are thrown out there like that. Yes. And again, you have to be aware. So emotional intelligence is being aware of what that other person is going through. Right. And uh, so it's critically important now, but I've, I've worked that philosophy my entire career. Um, I'm not saying I started that way. I think that's why it goes back to your question of the belief of mastering basic skills. When I first got into sales, you know, I... You say hello and you try to close a deal the, you know, within five minutes. Yeah. And uh, that's not the way to do it. Right. It reminds me when I would go into a car dealership and all I wanted to do was just like my car, with, my old Toyota 4Runner was being serviced, but I just wanted to glance at the new cars and all of a sudden it's like piranhas, you know, coming, right. coming at right. me. Right. It's very uncomfortable. Right. It's the, uh, that's the perception that, you know, in the training that I do for salespeople is that we try to break is the perception of that approach. Good. It's also, I mean, for entertainment, we all love that, you know, we, we might love a Wolf of Wall Street movie or mm -hmm. Alec Baldwin is, is so great and Glenn Gary, uh, Glenn Ross going, you know, always be closing. But that's not what sales is about. And right. for 95 percent of sales professionals, that's not how we work. But uh, again, every profession does have perceptions and uh, of how people perceive us. And uh, so again, with my training, I try to have people break that and That's go great. back to listening skills. So one of the reasons I wanted to invite you on is because mm -hmm. there's so much going on with, you know, there's over 40 million people out of work. Yeah. Some people are, are out of jobs, whereas other people want to work remotely. They don't know where to start. And maybe they have a sales background or they're considering my question to start off is really, what should they do? How should they go about finding work right now remotely? Well, you've, had, you've talked about this so far with a number of guests over the past couple of weeks. And what's really interesting, there's a theme that comes out and it's, it's you have to have a strategy. And the strategy of three months ago and four months ago has gotta be a lot different. You have to have a, a tough, thick skin. 
and, uh, and realize that it's not going to be easy, but there are paths of opportunity out there. Um, you had a guest talked about, I mean, we're not going to get jobs in the hospitality industry right That's now. That's right. We're not going to get jobs in the travel industry right now. But in the technology fields, uh, you know, certainly, I mean, right now, for example, Zoom, which was so popular, they're hiring a lot of salespeople. They're hiring a lot of customer support people. Um, there are certain industries um, where there is actually a lot of activity going on. How do you find out about that? You have to network. And we all hate that term networking because it thinks we all think we have that little badge that says, hi, I'm Dean or hi, right. I'm Janine. <laughs> and networking is just reaching out and saying, you know, what's going on in, in you know, Irvine or what's going right. on in northern New Jersey and looking for those opportunities. It's not easy, but you have to be, you know, strong and resilient and try to go out there and do it. So where would you suggest people actually start networking? Because I talk a lot about LinkedIn. Well, I, I, I'm a big believer in LinkedIn and we all have, you know, we might have 500 connections or we might have 2000. Then you see mm -hmm. people who have 20,000 and what you're looking for is just one. <laughs> you're looking right. for one person who can get you on that path to get started to introduce you to somebody else. So I always tell people, you, you, whether you have a hundred connections or thousands of connections, find five, just start with five right, and yeah. say, you know what? I, I haven't spoken to Janine in a while. And I'll reach out to you and I'll say, do you have any ideas of what's going on in the, in the Irvine area? And you might tell me, well, there are some things with remote learning at the, at the university, or there might be something going on with some technology companies south of you in San Diego. So it's starting Good. with a plan of one person. Mm -hmm. I know, because you never know what information that one person is going to give you. And just to be open to the possibility. And I like the idea of five people because right. there's a lot of information you can gain from five people. It's also being re realistic, and this is true both in good times and bad. Unfortunately, if you reach out to five, two are not gonna write you back. True. <laughs> and that's, that's human nature, unfortunately. So it's, yeah. it's on Monday morning, you approach this, you, know, you, you get dressed, you get ready to go, and you say, I'm gonna find the five or 10 connections. Mm -hmm. But it's being remembered that not everybody's gonna get right back to you, or, they might be in a similar situation as you. Yes. And uh, it's not in a, in, in a good uh, frame of mind to be able to be helping you. But again, you're just looking for one, two, three people who can yes. get you moving in the right direction. I'm going to add something based on my experience too. Sometimes people don't get back to you because they have something personal going on. Maybe they get sick right. with something. Maybe their kid is sick. Don't take it personal. Don't form all these negative notions about this person. Just let it go and move on to the next thing. Well, that's, that's very true. It's also remembering. It's, it's actually something I talk about in the book. It's in my book is that remember, you have to remember this also going forward so that when you do have an opportunity and somebody reaches out to you for assistance, don't turn the other way. And you know, right. how many times have we said, oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to help that person when they lost, it, lost their job. This goes back right to empathy and compassion and caring for people. Sometimes all we need is an ear, somebody to listen to That's us. Hey, true. I'm struggling. I've got furloughed. I lost my job. My salary got cut. So what do you say? Well, it's okay to say, I don't know what to say to you. I feel for you and I keep my eyes open for opportunities. So it's the two way street here that I think is yes. so critically important. Now, sometimes those people who have gotten furloughed or lost their job, there might be an idea that's been brewing them to start a new venture. What kind of advice would you give to them? This is something where I've changed throughout the years. You know, when I, when I first got into business, it was like, okay, I'm going to be in the publishing business and this is what I'm going to do for the next 50 years. Sure. And then I realized <laughs> the most important thing we need to do is keep our eyes on a lot of different opportunities. So for example, right now, you know, I do individual coaching with people in the middle stages of their career, um, mostly in salespeople, and helping them advance their careers. I do sales training courses with LinkedIn. I have the book that I work on, and I do presentations based off of my book. So it's trying to come up with a variety of different ideas. So if you're furloughed right now, one of the key things is see if you can get additional training. Um, but since I mentioned LinkedIn Learning, their, their, uh, their viewership right now since January is, uh, is, is really exploded in certain categories. That. 
and yeah. uh, people are trying to retool, you know, re educate themselves, advance their skills, doing online training with whether it's your local university uh, or local school. So these are things that you can do that you can enhance your uh, your skills during times like this. Um, I also want to stress to you, and you know this, it's it's easier said than done. It's very easy for me to sit here and say, oh, go out and do it. But yes. if you've been furloughed, <laughs> it's tough. I mean, you right. talk about this all the time. I do. What I would say is, what are you doing also to take care of yourself right now? What's your self-care look like? Your mental, physical, and emotional health really yeah. has to be tapped into. Like, that has to be your top priority. So when that you do, when you do get that Zoom meeting with a potential employer, you're at your A game. You're not looking exhausted. You're sharp. Right. You're ready. You know, you don't have a pile of laundry in the background. <laughs> you know, that you, no, you know, are ready. That's so true. And it's it, those, it goes back to that's so, do they teach that? Is there a class for that? No, no. but it's like, that's what it goes to the That's the class I want to teach. Yeah. Yes. I mean, because I mentioned to you my talks on self care and resilience. It's really hard right now with. Every, everybody home, you know, you have kids at home, you're everybody's home and you have to have this time for you, time for work, time for family. And there's this partitioning of your time so that when right. you are left alone, you can be productive and people respect right. that. I'm amazed sometimes, you know, when, if you go back six months ago when things were a lot different and I would work with people who at a certain age and they would, they would be looking for an, a job and they would say, a Dean, you know, I'm in my early 50s now. And I'm saying, I didn't ask your age. <laughs> Why are you telling me? Or that I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a job because I'm over 50. Negative. And imme <laughs> immediately, you know, th here's the body language. It's like this. Instead of I, like, right? <laughs> I, I'm 50 um, something. <laughs> I yeah, know. And, and it's, it's it's so it's having that positive approach the positive attitude again it's not easy every day <laughs> now is not going to be a ray of sunshine That's but right. when you are on call and you do have that message you have to be enthusiastic energetic yes and you do have to take care of yourself you're absolutely right i interviewed this woman i love her her name is jackie krischer mm -hmm. she's a triathlete she's 87. Um, in her 70s, she started training and et cetera, et cetera. She is the most optimistic person. And there are days when I think, oh, I feel this and I feel that and I feel down or whatever. And I think of people that are a lot older than me that are very positive and they're out there doing things. And we have to keep that in mind. Of course, we're going to have good days and bad days, but it's how you take care of yourself that really counts right now. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, I think that's one of the hidden things that's happening right now that we need to be so concerned about that there is a lot, are a lot of us, a lot of people who are going through anguish more than the traditional standard anguish. And right. it's a, in the coaching work I do, it's, it's more often than not, I'm saying I'm not qualified <laughs> and I have to tell people to know that they need to seek more professional help. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. You no. know, you go back when I was younger, you know, we didn't say you sought out professional People need to be um, very open to doing that and seek assistance where they ben. need it, where they're finding themselves, you know, more in a lower uh, depressed state Absolutely. than they, because uh, um, it's and, very concerning. You know, and I, I talk to people a lot. I, I'm saying I give these talks online and I say, you know, for kids, talk to your parents. If you can't mm -hmm. talk to your parent, talk to your coach, right. you know, talk to your um religious leader, teacher, mentor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Find someone mm. that you feel comfortable. That's, it's so funny. I, I was just with a, uh, I spoke to St. Francis College a couple of days ago, and it was the exact same thing. You seek it to your priest, your rabbi, somebody from your mosque, whoever it might be, whoever, yes. uh, seek a family member. Um, and now is the time not to be shy. You need to reach out. Right. And um, again, Four or five months ago, you'd say, okay, Monday through Friday, I'm going to go out and do it. Well, this now in this time frame, maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're at your full, you know, effort Good to idea. get things done. You know, you can't, you can't be on 100% of the time. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Did you see the article in Time Magazine talking about mental health and the people that are um, millennials have no problem saying to their bosses, listen, I need a mental health day. The people yeah. older would never say, right. I need a mental health day, I'm taking the day off, hope you don't mind, you know. Yeah. They wouldn't do that, but it's not a stigma. 
it's, there's nothing wrong with saying, Hey, I need to take time for me, dial into what's going on with me. Yeah, that's, um, I've been very fortunate. I had a very good first manager right out of college and I, and he was a big believer. This was going back many years in, he could, used to call a mental health day president's day, you know, just say, well, go out, call it a president's day. You go take the afternoon off. It is so critically important. A lot of companies do that well. And unfortunately a lot don't. And it's a, uh, the lesson there is also if you're in companies that aren't enabling you to do that, have those mental health days, Right. And even now, if you are furloughed, uh, you have to do that. It's so critically important to refresh, re-energize, you know, re-motivate yourself. Sure. And uh, I'm a, a big believer in that. What else would you like people to know about your book? Well, it's, it's a, I think what the feedback I've gotten, which is interesting, you know, in this day and age, reading, you know, 300 page books is not usually on the top of our list. So I have 200 topics. Each of them are about a page, page and a half long, as you saw. Yes. And it covers everything, you know, from how do you work with a micromanager or how do you handle a situation where you're in an argument with somebody in your work, which happens all the time. Sure. These are all lessons that, again, we're not taught at business schools or in communications classes or whatever it might be. It's on the job we learn these things or having a good coach or mentor who can help us along. I'll share so a little bit uh, on the back. If you don't mind, yeah, sure. um, some of the topics you, you have uh, nearly 200 topics, learning social and soft skills, which is good. You talked about taking a class, um, the value of emotional intelligence, the importance of planning and preparation, working for a micromanager. That's a mm -hmm. toughie. You know, it's interesting to me. What I've learned through the years is that, and I've certainly learned it now doing my coaching work is that there are more lousy managers out there than we think. <laughs> and it's, it's actually pretty depressing where right. people get promoted into management slots, but they've never been trained on how to be leaders and how to be yeah. motivated and learning about emotional intelligence, all again, all of these basics. And uh, again, you go back years ago, I would say to people, or I was trained that, oh, stick it up. You can do it. You, know, you can handle it. And now I tell people, you know, if you're in a situation that's toxic, are not healthy, you've got to find that next opportunity. You bet. It doesn't mean you, you don't quit tomorrow, but right. you start looking and looking out for yourself for that next opportunity. Excellent advice, because sometimes it is very toxic and it's time to move on. But as you said, don't jump ship yet. Just find something. Right. Yeah. Certain industries are more toxic than others, but I've, I've used that. I've heard that word toxic more in the past uh, year than I've heard in, in ages. And there are toxic companies and toxic environments. Meanwhile, there are some really good ones too out there. There sure are. So. Where would you suggest people look for work? We talked about LinkedIn. Sometimes, like I said, it feels like a black hole. You're just submitting your resume. Um, right. I say also tap into your alumni network. That's really good. But what would you have to say about that? That's a good point about alumni networks and also even the career centers that where you went, we all went to college. They are, they are anxious to help. And I, I just spoke at St. Francis College of New York and their career center there is terrific. And at Seton Hall where I've spoken, they have great career centers where they want to go out and try and help people or at least give guidance or motivation and look at your resume and look at your LinkedIn profile. Um, I go back to I, most jobs, come through referrals and networking sure. and where it can get very frustrating is we see this great job on a job search board and you say, oh, that's perfect for me. Well, sometimes that works, but in most cases we find that next opportunity through a referral or through networking. And uh, I spend my time all on, and you spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, I know, I as do, do I. And uh, that's where you can communicate with people and meet new people and uh, doesn't happen overnight. And that's the hard part right now, everybody, because so yes. many people, as you know, are stressed out just trying to make that next uh, you know, oh, payment. I know. I know. Oh. So, yep. um, um, one thing I will share about LinkedIn is that um, it's also a place to get inspired. So it might be that you're not meeting somebody who's going to necessarily hire you, but maybe um, you used to love to draw, you're very creative, you love animation, and you're watching somebody present their work from Pixar or wherever, PBS, and you think, right. now there's an avenue I'd love to pursue. Like right. you can just get such inspiration from either classes or looking at other people's portfolios or whatever. So you never know where you're going to get that inspiration. 
it's a, uh, you know, we go back a few years and we would think, oh, LinkedIn is just where we put some of our, you know, uh, our educational background or where we put our career background. And now it's, that's exactly right, Janine, is that's where we're finding ideas. And that's where, I mean, I, I post pretty regularly on LinkedIn. I do short videos, I do short uh, presentations. Uh, and uh, it's amazing the people I meet uh, from around the world now. It's great. And it's all done by, you know, the, as you say, you get inspiration from other people. And hopefully right. I'm able to inspire people back. Um, I will add to that, that um, I've met a lot of people too from all over the world. I just did an interview with somebody, you may, I don't know, think you heard it yet. It was somebody in Belgium. Mm -hmm. He's an animator mm -hmm. and a serious designer, right. creator. But just be open because um, taking classes, I am taking a class in the science of well-being. I'm meeting people from all over the world who are taking that class. And it's just a way right now where we're feeling very isolated to not feel yes. so isolated. It's, it's interesting, you know, there's been so much written now about people saying, oh, the, the role of the office is gonna change and we're all gonna be working from home. I'm a real, I love being with people and that's, that's gonna be, I, I, mean, I love travel and I love when being in sales my whole life, you know, traveling the world and, it's, uh, I think it is so important that uh, there will be a balance. And if we're all at home, we're going to be, I mean, this is terrific. We're on Zoom and I can see you and I can get a good sense of your style and personality. But when you're together, that's when we really uh, we do uh, learn more about people and get even more inspiration. So there will be a balance to that, I think. Going even forward, if we can home. social distance and have meetings, but we're six feet apart. You know, I, go, right. I know some schools and some people are having meetings outside, which I think is yeah. great, you know. It's also, if you're single, you know, I, I speak to people who are single and they're working from home and it's great, you know, and then they say, you know what, I, when I get off my call, I'm alone. I know. And then again, you, this is right up your alley. You know, yes. I mean, this is what you talk about. Yes. And it's... That's, I mean, if there's a family around, that's, it's the, it's both sides of it. Some people have, you know, what the three ring circus going on at their home, right. kids, family, and so forth. And, and me, then you have the other extreme where people are at eight o'clock at night on a Friday and they're alone. That's tough. It is very tough. And uh, so it's, uh, there's, a, again, there's a lot going on right now. Yes. Um, that, that you know, that you speak about all the time. I do. But I do know for people that are alone, like I know like the improv companies like Groundlings and um, UCB, they're doing online comedy nights, Friday nights, Saturday nights. Right. You can connect with people. Obviously, be careful, you know, who you're meeting, right. but you right. can connect. And also, I'm a firm believer in walking, riding your bike. I know yeah. when I'm walking in the morning, people have their masks on, they're looking down, you can hardly see their mm -hmm. eyes. And me, right. I'm saying, hello, <laughs> hi, because I yeah. like, I like talking to people and I like seeing who will say hello and yeah. because it puts a smile on their face, you know? Oh, that's a, you're, you're preaching to the choir there. I mean, that's, a, that's been something throughout my career. I always would love like walking the hallway of my old office and you'd see, I'd say hello to everybody and it would it'd drive me nuts if somebody would do one of these or not say hello or divert sure. their eyes. I mean, to me, that's, again, that's a basic skill. <laughs> Smile and say hello. Sure is. And, uh, you know, so it doesn't yeah. mean you have to, there, there's some people take it to the extreme, but it's a, it's just being warm and friendly that I think that's a, a again, an important skill set. And some people might say, well, you know, I'm an introvert, but we all need some kind of social connection once right. in a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I like being with people, but I love being in my backyard reading a book and totally turn it off. That's good. And it's a, there is that time where we do just need to, you know, chill out and, and just be quiet and relax yes. Yes. and not have to worry about, you know, saying hello to Janine when she's on her walk. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Where can people find out more about you, Dean? Well, I think the best spot is on LinkedIn. Please reach out to me. It's K-A-R-R-E-L, Carol, and first name is Dean. I, again, I post pretty regularly, and I try to post some inspirational uh, messages uh, uh, and videos where I talk about the challenges I've had in my life and successes and then balancing it all out. So please connect with me. And uh, my book, Mastering the Basics, is available. And uh, there, it, there is. it is. So. Thank you so much. It's a, uh, You're so and I was pretty honest in there. I've got some things. It's a, uh, I talk about, you know, I 
people say, Dean, you're always so optimistic or upbeat. Well, I've had my all, we all have our moments, as you know, Janine, and yes. life is a roller coaster sometimes. And yes. uh, um, it sure I've is. I've been on that roller coaster too. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Gene. This has been great. It's just a pleasure to meet you in person. I've loved the, uh, the, the previous uh, episodes that I've watched as you started this new, uh, this new venture here with this, this side of the podcasts. And it's just been terrific. And you've had some great, great guests. Thank you. Wait till you see who's coming up next. Um, if you go to my site, JanineBernstein.com slash new hyphen series, I keep listing all the guests. I think I have 25 to 30. I have more to put on. It's been tremendous. And a lot from LinkedIn. Yeah, you're you're been busy. You don't sit still, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that's terrific. That's how we all stay young, and that's how we all stay happy and motivated and encouraged. So good it's for true. you. Except I do say, I'll just leave it with this. This is not a time to go, go, go. I mean, I know mm -hmm. when I have to just disconnect and go do something else because you're not supposed to burn out. This isn't the time when you're gonna yeah. write a 500 page novel and spend no, no. time with your family. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's my last point on that, that it's being realistic, whether it's in your job search, being in your, in your career search, family, business, it's being realistic. You can't accomplish it all right now. That's, that is so very, that's such a great message you just gave. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Janine. Great to meet you. Thanks you so too. much. Take care. Bye-bye.